Entering into a contract of marriage. When I say contract, I'm not talking about the actual marriage contract. I'm talking about a business contract. The in, I'm not sure what they call it. The annulment contract. The whole documentation orientated around the fact that the if the marriage failed, that the guy would lose nothing. Um, I would say, bearing in mind, many a marriage in the Philippines is annulled as being wrong or fake or whatever you want to call it, uh, based on technicalities. So, for example, say you wanted to get rid of your marriage and divorce is illegal, um, some people go for annulment, some people find a technicality such as he wasn't really a priest or there was something wrong with the process that made us technically not marry that day. So if you can do that with the church, <laughs> when you create these documents, what do you think the odds are on them actually being legally binding? Um, I would say it's just not worth it. But also you've got the problem of the property you can own the house, you cannot own the land. So the land is your wife's anyway. Nothing you can do about that. You can own the property on it, but then she could go, bang, I'm charging you half a million a year rent. What are you going to do about it? They're a lot open to you, you know, if you decide to separate. So what's the odds on being able to resolve it? Very, very slim. Um, what about her chasing your assets in the US Some this was another question asked if she's got nothing in the US that can actually bankroll that um, I think you're okay because the first thing you've got to do is recognize the marriage in the US but I mean it's like a friend of mine from the UK the, the UK is a bit odd on its recognition of marriage from the Philippines but it, putting that aside Going through the legal process in the UK, the US, whatever, involves money. So if they haven't got cash flow to actually do the case, even if they had the legal right to do it, how are they going to do it? Because you've got to remember, they haven't got access to the country. Um, say, say, for example, I married somebody um, within the EU. I would have a high risk because she can travel to the UK. She can then get me to pay for her case against me <laughs> because I've seen it done by um, with friends. Um, but if she's got no legal access to Europe and cannot go to court and everything else, what's the odds on her being able to do something that's going to be detrimental, detrimental to you financially? What's the lawyer going to do? You can't say, well, she said she, you've got to pay her. You just go, no chance. She's out in the Philippines anyway. <laughs> the lawyer can't do anything. He can't force you to pay her because uh, you need to pay her to pay him. So in that whole process, is the fact is you're out the, the too far east. Um, that's It's as simple as that. Beyond that, if she was living in the UK or living in the US, yes, she's got a right to everything as anybody else has legally and entitled to go after you in your own home, your own country. Um, but in the Philippines, it's offshore. They can't get from A to B without a spousal visa or anything else. And you're not going to sign off on it unless you're really, really stupid. Um, if <laughs> yeah, yeah, just come to the U.S. I'll sign your paperwork so you can come and sue me. Um, yeah, you ain't gonna do it, are you? So the answer to that is no. And on top of this, could I give some example? There's an estimate between ten and thirty thousand children in the Philippines. It might even be just Clark area that are children of ex-servicemen um, that have had liaisons with the Filipino population while stationed or on R&R &R in the Philippines. 
they don't get nothing. Um, it may have changed in the last few years, but I remember reading up on a priest that was actually trying to get some um, child support for these children because their fathers are basically... Um, left the Philippines and never paid a single cent towards their uh, children's upkeep. So if that can be done on a large scale like that and they get away with it, because, I mean, child support would be a biggie, um, then I think you're pretty safe. Simple as that. I mean, it's only if you're coming from a wife with a wealthy family, wealthy background, and some connections that you may have to worry but the average expat is going to marry somebody middle class, etc. Um, financially, the middle class is only developing in the Philippines. And it's not at a level that could su support a court case against somebody. So US, U UK, don't worry about it. In the Philippines, you could lose everything because you'd have to prove that you own it because everything's going to be gifted. There's a magic phrase for you because it's the same phrase that's used globally uh, when a guy goes, oh, I gave her the car to use for work because she couldn't afford one and she was just supposed to use it and pay me back. And, Did you have an agreement? No. Did you have a contract? No. So you gifted her the car. No, it was agreed that she would pay. Did you have it in a contract? No. It's exactly the same. And that's why you just... The, the, the easiest way of saying this, if you're going into a relationship, go into it 100%, but if you're putting in 100%, don't assume you're going to get anything out the other end. If, you, if you're planning on things going sour at some point, then you shouldn't even be bothering to get married in the first place. Right, thanks for mar uh, thanks for getting married. Uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching. Yeah.